The town of Riverdale has more secrets than even its characters realize. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Riverdale details you missed. You repeating everything I'm saying is getting really annoying. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're digging into the subtler points that make Riverdale such an amazing show. We're basing our picks on a mix of obscure homage, creative art direction, and how naturally each detail is integrated into the show. Not until Cheryl, you tell get me the hell out of my house before I kill you. Number 10. Archie Kins With so many women chasing Archie, his longest-running nickname wasn't far behind. Lovingly dubbed Archikins by Veronica, Archie can barely hold back smiles when he hears the moniker. What do you say, Archikins? Be the J to my bae? The name goes back decades, as Veronica has used it in and out of the comics endlessly. Always up to something, Veronica even uses the endearing title to manipulate Archie long before they date in the show. Cheryl also controls Archie with the name, even trying Polykins on Betty's sister. Oh, Polykins. It's much more fun being friends than mortal enemies. Compared to the rare Archibald thrown around in the series, You know we can be extremely generous. Archibald to the right people. Archiekins rolls off the tongue naturally. We won't take no for an answer. Archiekins. Number 9. Instagram Names This is disgusting. Take it down. When Veronica gets harassed online by footballer Chuck Clayton, even the most obscure Riverdale students jump on her. As Veronica's picture with Chuck goes viral, she gets tons of mean comments on Instagram from her classmates. What the hell is a sticky maple? It's kind of what it sounds like. It's a Riverdale thing. No, Kevin. It's a slut-shaming thing. In these comments, however, are some of the many teens of Riverdale that the series had yet to bring to life. Watching Veronica scroll through the comments, comic regulars like Tony Topaz, Frankie Valdez, Marie Rodriguez, and Cricket Odell appear below her photo. Offering fans even more characters, Tony eventually appears in the second season, while Cricket's money obsession has led her to the blossoms. More handsome on the outside, more rotten on the inside. Number 8. The Pembroke As the series begins, Veronica and her mother move into Riverdale at the Pembroke apartment building. Yeah, sure, Mom, no problem. I'll just sexually manipulate Archie into doing my bidding. As long as you're in control. Like many locations within the town, the building's name is a clever allusion to the series' history. In the comics, Pembroke is actually a neighboring town to Riverdale and home to the Blossoms. Cheryl and Jason even attend the Pembroke Academy, transferring to Riverdale High School depending on the storyline. With decades of comics to reference, the apartment's name is one of the more clever takes on the source material. I was handling some unfinished business for your father. I'm gonna need more than that, Mom. Details. Specifics. While its address of 330 seems like another Easter egg, it's actually the apartment's address in Vancouver, British Columbia. Number 7. Vegas the Dog While Archie's best friend will always be Jughead, his dog Vegas still gets a lot of love on the show. No, dude, are you kidding me? Vegas has actually been part of the series since the 60s, making him one of its longest-running characters. Alright, here you go, Vegas. Good boy. Appearing in multiple versions of Archie's stories over the years, Vegas has even gotten to speak in the books. One zombie storyline in the comics also featured Vegas making a heroic sacrifice to save Archie's life. While Vegas is more of a background detail in the first season of the show, his background is explored more in season two to the delight of Veronica. I wanted him so bad. I was like, yes, Dad, I'm ready. I'm so ready. Cutest origin story ever. Number six. Little Archie. Betty was so against us not being in the same grade that she took it upon herself to tutor me every single day. Even on Riverdale, Archie and Betty have a long history together that predates their teenage romance. When their love and even friendship is on the line, Archie confides in Veronica about their childhood. I hate that I hurt her. Give her time, Archie. Archie says that as kids, he proposed to Betty, but Betty simply said, Oh, little Archie. While the line fits the story well, it's actually paying sneaky homage to the Little Archie comics. Following Archie's childhood mischief, 
Little Archie ran for nearly 30 years along with the core comics. One of the most interesting references in the series, it's unlikely we'll be getting a Little Archie spin-off series anytime soon. And don't despair. I don't think your story with Betty is over. Number 5. The Archies And their special guest stars, my daughter Josie and her pussycats. <laughs> Josie and the Pussycats halftime show for Riverdale High features tons of modern electronics and dancing. Covering Inner Circle's Candy Girl, Sugar Sugar, the Pussycats are also updating the 1969 hit Sugar Sugar. Sugar. Oh, honey, honey. Topping the Billboard Hot 100 for four weeks in 1969, the track is by none other than the Archies. The band featured Archie, Reggie, Betty, Jughead, Veronica, and even Hot Dog, becoming one of the most successful virtual bands in history. While they eventually died out in the music world, the show continues to honor them through Archie's music career and work with the Pussycats. Am I drowned out in a crown? Are you listening? Number 4. Riverdale High opened the same year that Archie was created. Riverdale High first opened its doors in 1941 and, and hasn't been redecorated since, apparently. Riverdale High School has always been one of the staple locations of the comics and was a natural setting for the show. While giving Veronica a tour of the school, Betty mentions that it was founded in 1941. Archie himself debuted in 1941, appearing for the first time in Pep Comics issue 22. Watchful viewers may have already seen Pep subtly celebrated in Riverdale's motto, The Town with Pep. Pep Comics' original publishers, MLJ Comics, were even honored with a store in Riverdale. While the police station itself bears the number 1939 to commemorate the year MLJ was founded. Number 3. The parents are teen heartthrobs Archie and friends' good looks must be genetic, considering all their parents were teenage heartthrobs. That's all. Shoo, bitches. Before playing Fred Andrews, Luke Perry was Dylan on Beverly Hills 90210 for nearly a decade. Yeah, well, I just don't believe in winning through intimidation. Molly Ringwald was one of the biggest stars of the 80s, appearing in multiple John Hughes films ahead of her role as Mary Andrews. I can't believe this. They f***ing forgot my birthday. Mrs. Cooper, actress Maid Chen Amick, got her start playing Shelley on Twin Peaks, returning to that role after Riverdale's first season. The name is Gordon Cole, and I couldn't help but notice you from the booth. Skeet Ulrich appeared in Scream prior to playing F.P. Jones, while Marisol Nichols appears in Scream 2 before taking on Hermione Lodge. That's great. Thank you. Number 2 cherry pie. For the gritty and mysterious update to the Archie comic series, Twin Peaks provided a lot of influence. The shows have plenty in common, with the most obvious example being Alice Cooper actress Maid Chen Amick. Amick's days serving cherry pie at the Double R Diner became iconic moments on Twin Peaks. Agent Cooper here might want to try a slice of that pie. Cherry pie? Best in the Tri-Counties. Old habits die hard, however, as Alice serves up her own cherry pie to Archie and Betty. Along with the moody look of the Riverdale intro, the Welcome to Riverdale sign is also a sly visual reference. Given the show's comparable plots, fans have even speculated Betty's owl bookends are an Easter egg themselves. Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. This could be very bad for us. For us? For Mexico, I mean. Anyway, there's nothing I can do over here. Sorry? So I'll try not to be too long. Joaquin? Yeah. Here you go. One double chocolate and one old-fashioned vanilla. Thank you. Betty, can we make a vow? Number one, Jughead's iconic S. Chuggy. With his iconic crown, Jughead Jones was always going to be one of the series' more interesting characters to adapt. What are you working on? My novel. It's about this summer. On top of his new beanie, Jughead's updated wardrobe featured a few of his signature S's. To match his classic sweater look, Jughead has an S on his shirt in multiple episodes. The S also found its way onto Juggy's laptop to cover up an Apple logo. One Dream sequence even gave us his cardboard crown with a sweater as well. The origins of the S remain a mystery in the comics, 
while creator Bob Montana's widow claims it stands for Squirrel Hill. In case you haven't noticed, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in, and I don't want to fit in. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.